the the video from the other day a lot of people were like oh here he is with his clickbait stuff again and i really did find a crime scene we don't want to be prejudiced you know we have to respect the uh, methican americans and we're just going to call her methany methany is standing there with all of his stuff she's dripping wet and he said what are you doing in my shop who are you which by the way is a good way to die Lick it. Oh, you got a good bath <laughs> Well, what's up guys it's daniel from arms family homestead and uh another beautiful day in southern oklahoma i cannot believe the weather we've had lately usually by now we're pushing temperatures getting up in the mid to high 90s uh we got a little rain yesterday had a little rain shower come through and the temperatures are like hovering in the low 80s lately low to mid 80s it's been unbelievably nice uh i've got the uh, new holland skid steer warming up this morning and put i still have still have the tree reaper on there this thing gosh if you guys saw the last video holy moly so the tree reaper here came from iron craft attachments um guys huh i'm blown away by the power of this thing i'm like i'm having a lot of fun running it i'm gonna go out and play on this thing i mean work i said work it's work it's not play i'm gonna go out and work for a couple hours but i do have some new information new developments on the crime scene that we found the other day when uh, we were out working saw that what looked like a crashed pickup truck with a tarp spread across it uh, got some more information on that i'm gonna do a little bit of work and i'll tell you everything than just a heavy duty brush hog. I don't know if you guys can see, but under the bottom, uh, you know, you've got three separate cutting blades, but it also has mulching teeth on that big uh, disc, which is like a stump jumper. So when you drive over material and cut it down, you know, like you can back drag and it just mulches it just like a mulcher would. When you cut anything from small brush, they, they advertise this thing to cut trees up to seven inches. If that's true, I don't really don't know why I need that disc forestry mulcher we're still going to try it out waiting on the ballistic door to come in but uh this machine can get some work done quickly I'm sure, whoop, let me get out of here before I fall down. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering why in the world I'm mowing down trees on my property like this. And we use a lot of different tools to 
to help improve the habitat for wildlife. So deer, turkeys, you know, rabbits, squirrels, whatever it is. And this area is one that I try to burn when I can. It's not, it's kind of a bigger piece of, uh, bigger section of my property that I can't do a control burn on all the time. But this is more like what I want it to look like. Oaks and hardwoods that produce acorns and crops for, you know, for the, for the wildlife. But this area back in here where I've been going through is completely overgrown in these little small elm trees. Elm trees are, they're not, I'm not gonna say it's an invasive species, but I would say it's more of a, a non-desirable tree species that we wanna keep under control and manage so that we can grow big, healthy oak trees that feed the wildlife. So I'm not clearing everything. I'm just kind of going through, making some trails through here, not necessarily trails for us to use, but places that are a little bit more overgrown like this, knock some of it down, and it makes, uh, makes better habitat for the wildlife. Kind of brings us back to the scene of the crime where we found that abandoned pickup truck down there that looked like it had been wrecked the other day but first things first now i understand why ironcraft called this thing the tree reaper like i'm telling you i it, it's literally like mowing your lawn on trees you know two three inches you, you don't even slow down it doesn't even slow the blades down it's unreal um definitely the ultimate trail building machine right there that new holland skid steer the tree reaper i i can make atv trails all through my property in just one pass just driving over trees but anyways i was going to talk to you guys about the the video from the other day a lot of people were like oh here he is with his clickbait stuff again and i really did find a crime scene uh the other day when we were out here had the the other swing boom cutter on the attack on the uh skid steer i kept seeing something down across the creek and just down the way from me just down this power line right away is the national park public hunting area and uh, same place where houston and i were hunting right here when we had some guys shooting at a deer in front of us well so <laughs> there's a lot more to the story and it gets a little bit comical I'm not trying to make fun of anybody or make light of a, a problem, but in Oklahoma, we have obviously a methamphetamine problem. I'm not saying meth was to blame for this, but there's more than one character to the story. And there was a male who had, a male subject who had driven his truck down into an area where it wasn't supposed to be and got stuck. He covered it up with a tarp because he was pretty much living the in that truck and it was stuck pretty bad it wasn't wrecked but the reason there was crap scattered everywhere is because he was just living there on the edge of the creek bank probably for four or five days but in the beginning he wasn't alone so let's back up about four days i shot that video on tuesday if you back up to th thursday a friend of mine who lives about straight line probably a mile from here walked out into his shop one morning or afternoon i'm not sure what it was 
And when he walked, he's, he lives on a long, a big property, a couple hundred acres, has a long driveway with a security gate like I have. Walked into his shop and there's a lady standing there with an armload of his stuff. All the lights are off. And we're not going to name any names, but uh, since we do have a methamphetamine problem here, we, we don't want to be prejudiced. You know, we have to respect the uh, Mexican Americans. And we're just going to call her Methany. Methany is standing there with all of his stuff. She's dripping wet. And he said, what are you doing in my shop? Who are you? Which, by the way, is a good way to die, first off. But he said, what are you doing? Who are you? And why are you all wet? Well, apparently, she had been in his swimming pool, fully clothed, with tall muck boots on, like rubber boots, and decided to walk in his shop, use the bathroom, and gather up some of his stuff. And he's like, what in the world are you doing? So... He sent her on his on her way. He didn't want to deal with her. Like, he didn't want to have an altercation. He kicked her out of the shop, and as soon as she walked away, he called the police. They came and arrested her, but before she left, she's walking down his driveway and takes her shirt off and is twirling it around her head, talking to the stars, I guess. I, I don't know. So, <laughs> police arrest her. Find out the next day when she woke up in the jail, she had no idea where she was, what town, what county, what jail, how she got there, or anything. Well, she just so happened to be the girlfriend of the guy who got stuck down here. So more than likely what had happened was they drove down off into the public hunting area the other day and got stuck. And she took off walking, ended up at his house, went for a swim in his pool because it was hot. And so th come to find out that pickup truck that was parked down here has been uh, in the neighborhood. Let's just say that. Within several miles, um, probably pilfering and stealing stuff. It was full of junk. But when the park rangers walked down here the other day to check it out to see if there was a dead body or something down there, because there were buzzards flying around, the guy was nowhere to be found. There was no one around the vehicle. So, like I said, they called uh, the wrecker service, which is a good friend of mine. The only way he could get down to it, because it, where it was, was to bring his skid steer out. And when he got down there, guess who shows up? Methany's boyfriend comes stumbling out of the woods. And is like, hey, whoa, I'm, are you, and, you know, what's going on? Well, isn't it funny? He didn't come out when the park rangers were down there yelling his name. Anyways, so they used the skid steer, dragged the pickup truck out. Just, I, I'm not trying to be rude or prejudiced against anyone. I know everyone has their own problems, their own struggles. But uh, we didn't used to deal with homeless type people too much in our area. It was kind of the big city thing. But it's definitely spreading into our areas. There's more and more of that going on. I know people struggle and people have their problems. But uh, meth is bad. You know those old commercials where they took the egg and said, this is your brain, and a skillet and was like, beat the egg with the skillet and said this is your your brain on meth kind of related to this is the skillet and those trees are your brain meth does some really bad things to people and i know that from experience with family and friends but that guy down there was lucky he didn't go to jail that day um his girlfriend did go to jail but she's lucky she didn't get shot and we live in a very rural area and a very we're spread out don't i mean Obviously, there's not a lot of houses around me. I don't live in a subdivision neighborhood, but everyone knows everyone for the most part, and we all kind of look out for each other. And it was just crazy to hear that, you know, my neighbor had someone standing in his shop, and he lives a long ways off of the nearest county road. It's several hundred yards back off the road. And she's just in his shop pilfering through his stuff. Even if she had a whole armload of stuff, where's she going to go with it? She's on foot. But... Anyways, so there's the story of the crime scene that we did find down there. It was a crime. They wrote the guy about four or five tickets for doing stuff in, you know, in the uh, National Park public hunting area where he wasn't, you have a right to be there. You don't have a right to drive down in there, tear stuff up, get stuck, throw trash everywhere, you know, basically live in the public hunting area. Can't do that. So I think I'm going to take this back to the house, get it all cleaned up. Houston's been wanting to do some fishing he's bored it's summertime i get it and he wants to go to the creek and do some fishing so let's go fishing
That water's cold. Maybe. Ooh. Yeah, I don't think I'll be jumping in. Ooh. Earl, that's chilly. It'll be. Uh, it's just water. Probably gonna take the bobber off my little trout magnet though. Especially if they're in that deeper water. Look at you learning to fish it from a distance before you get there. Are you making fun of me? No. You did what I taught you to. <laughs> he tried to bite it. Yeah. You said, I don't care if you miss it, I'm gonna catch you anyways. Yeah. Nice bluegill. Yeah. Oh, it went in between his eye. Between his eye and the head. You know what? He would make really good catfish bait on some jug lines. I came up really easily. Well, it didn't take long. Yeah. Yep. That's a smallmouth. If it'll stop moving, I'll get it. <laughs> Earl. Earl's gonna get your fish, dude. Well, I can't even get the fish currently. You're just gonna have to grab him. There you go. The heck? Oh. Confused. Let's see. Hold him up. Nice little mm. small mouth. That's a good size for the creek. You caught bigger. Yeah, we caught bigger, but it's a nice size for the creek. There's one. Ah. He's tiny. A little green sunfish. I know green sunfish are not a uh, desirable species to have in your creeks and ponds and stuff, but I mean, it's a pretty fish, even if it's not desirable. Got him. Look at that bass. <laughs> we got a double, Houston. Oh, Houston caught one at the same time I did. The bass is tiny. But my bass might be, well, not, it's a little bit bigger than your green sunfish. Look at that. Aww. Look at that little bass. <laughs> he's so small. Wait, I, that one would be so good in my little fish pond. I can, he's so small I can barely lip him. Look, you hold him out real far. Man, why is that guy's hand so big? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, he'd have been good in the, in the fish pond. Yeah. Be a good pet bass, huh? Yeah. Hey, there's a turkey feather. Turkey feather laying there. I didn't realize that that was a turkey feather. Yep. Right there. Water's kind of dirty looking today. Woo. Oh, you got one up there? I'm bigger. Biggest one of the day so far. I can catch you, Dad. No, don't do that. Houston got one at the same time. We got another double. Switched out colors, I changed different. <laughs> 
change to a different uh, crawfish bait. One with a little bit lighter color. The creek water is kind of kind of a stained greenish yellow color today, so it seemed to work. Keep it. You got a hybrid. Oh, so I'm thinking that looks like a green sunfish and a red ear hybrid. That's it, what it looks like. It is really pretty, isn't it? Yeah, if it's from a red ear, it probably came from the, from the pond. From yeah, it could have originally. Flooded. Yeah, we put a bunch of red ear sunfish in the pond, and the pond drains to the creek when it when the water floods. So here, I'll hold on to him if you can get the hook out. Here, let me hold them. I want to take a picture. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty. They don't get much prettier than that. That's like a... Like Ron made a pretty good point. Oh, I've got a fish. Can't even reel it. That's all right. I'll reel him in in a second. Ron made a really good point when he was here. He said a lot of these fish remind him of a lot of the cichlids and different kinds of fish in South Florida because they're, mm -hmm. you know, they've been... They were pets that were released probably at one time. But all right, let's let him go. That's a cool fish, man. Yeah, look at its belly. It's yep. Fins right there. Woo! All right, here, hold this. I'm gonna catch my fish. Okay. He's still pulling hold on me. Hold on. Feeling. He went all the way up the thing. Oh, it's a bass. It <laughs> is. He's way smaller <laughs> than your little your little sunfish was. Yeah. Look. They like that little crawdad, though. Yeah, they do. Little trout magnet. Look at that. Houston made a good point. This would be pretty good sized little pet bass. Not that we need more pets, but. <laughs> Earl, you can't have this guy. Nope, can't have him. got one too. What do you got? Bluegill? I think we got a matching set. We got a, we got a matching pair. Here. They both, they both have yellow or orange bellies. Yep, mine's a little bigger though. That's so, uh, yeah. <laughs> mine's a little bigger? Yeah, it is. Not by much. You gotta get another one while you get your off food. It's already off the of hook now. Got it. Hey. Fish lap. Lick it. What about oh, that? You got a good bass. <laughs> now you got to lick it, Houston. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, uh, now you got to lick it. You yelled lick it right at the time that bass hit your lure, right? I mean, I did, but that doesn't mean I have to lick it. So Houston's it. fishing with a little trout magnet lure that we bought, and uh, we are not trout fishing, but it's just like a little inline spinner, kind of like a rooster tail almost, but man, it's working <laughs> good on the creek fish today, isn't it? Yeah, that's a big bass for the creek. Yeah, that's a good one, man. That's nice. Yeah, got a fat belly on it. It's probably full of eggs still. Yeah. My shoe oh, came off. Oh, hey, don't throw it back yet. Because oh. you got to lick it. Oh, a kiss will oh, work. Kiss Give it to okay. Jimmy. The Jimmy Houston treatment. Yeah. She gone. That was a good bass. It was. I agree. You know, I wasn't really coming down here to make a full video today. We were just had a little bit of time to kill before Houston's baseball game. He's got a postseason tournament starts today and uh, he doesn't play until about six o'clock and we had a I don't know an hour or so to kill I've been doing a little work on the skids here today a little bit that's what you've been doing all day no oh you got fish <laughs> I saw it bite I was watching it that's a good oh my goodness no that's oh that's a big bluegill man you're right that's not all I've been doing all day I went to the gym this morning, then I went to the parts store to get parts for the skid steer, and then I edited yesterday's vlog. For about two hours. It took a little while. 
and then I went out and actually did a little actual work on the skid steer. Had that iron craft uh, big brush cutter on there. Look at that. Nice bluegill. So, Houston's been at the house bored all day and was like, Dad, we got to do something. We got to do something. It's summer break and I'm bored. <laughs> so here we are at the creek. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. This thing is really handy, but it likes to fall over a lot. This one usually casts pretty good, but I don't have enough line on it right now. So I got to whip it out there. Well, there's a whole school of fish right out here and there was a soft shell turtle right up on the surface. Just cast out there and see if you can get one. Straight over there, there's like, I can see about 10. Should be pretty easy. Oh yeah, you already got one. Not oh, he hit it. Oh, you got him. You got him, big old green sunfish. Big old one. Oh my, this is the biggest one. Oh. It's Ooh. definitely a green sunfish and a bluegill hybrid. Yeah. I'm not sure why this creek has so many that are hybrids, but that's definitely huge. not just a green sunfish. This thing is huge. You can do it. Come on, you can do it. Oh, I haven't done it yet. There we go. Look at that. It's yeah. pretty and big. That's too. a good one. All right, toss him back. Oh, Earl about got him. Okay. What I got a fish. Bass? I got a fish. I got to catch a fish. Hey, bass are fair. I know. I'm, I told you. Well, I got a camera in my hand and everything else. Well, set it down. Some of us got to work here. I'm working too. Oh, well, that's true. I'm making most of your money right now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just threw it right up in the shallow water. They were biting the spinner instead of the lure. Oh, there's a bass too. Oh, oh, I had one and missed it. Oh, big bass, big bass. Oh, dang. Big creek bass. Look at there, oh, Earl. Look at there, Earl. Look at there, Earl. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that might be bigger than mine. Uh, pretty close. Pretty close. Look at that. You talk about a simple setup. A little small spinning reel, a bobber, and a trout magnet. Look at that. Little uh, crawfish is working magic today. He about stole my bait though. Look at that guy. That might be, uh, might be my last fish. I don't know, we're gonna have to go pretty soon. Well, buddy, thanks for the fun. We'll see you next time. Sure wish we had about 30 more minutes before we had to leave. Yeah. You're, uh, you need to fix your tail on that. Yeah. I really want to go fish right up there, but we uh, just don't have much time. We're supposed to be back at the house. I told mom we'd try to be back at the house. I told her we'd be back at the house about four and it's 3.55. Come on, man, catch another bass. You know, if people would watch the content long enough, I'd come down here and this is what we do every day. Our whole channel would be nothing but Houston and Daniel and Jacoby. Yeah. Go fishing at the creek. <laughs> they are, hey, people, our creek videos have always done really, really well. Yeah. But uh, we got to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. But who wouldn't want to watch Earl playing in the water? Huh, buddy? It's your first summer without Bella by your side, isn't it? I bet you if, if I had to think what Bella was doing right now, 
should probably be in the little hole over there where you first drive through and picking up rocks and putting them on the bank. She'd either be doing that or she'd be sitting right about here, yeah. panting, <laughs> sitting in the water. Yeah. Last fish of the day. Oh, man. See, now that's a green sunfish right there. That one's big enough we could eat. Yeah, it is. But to me, that's that's more of a pure green sunfish. You can tell by the size, the shape, the color. I mean, he's still really pretty. Hang on, I barely have a hold of him. He's a very pretty fish, but with the fin structure, the shape of his body, it's definitely not a hybrid with a bluegill or a red ear, so yeah. pretty fish. Yeah. All right, mom's texting me, we gotta go. Oh, she yeah. said, I thought we were leaving at four. I said, I thought we were gonna be back at the house at four. <laughs> uh, 357. We got to go. Yeah, we got to go. He's a little faster than me. 